questions. Recognize the Leader of the Opposition. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Canada's health accord expires today. What this means for the province of Saskatchewan is that we will lose a billion dollars in federal funding for health care over the next decade. This is a direct result, Mr. Speaker, of a federal government that has very little interest in supporting Canada's most cherished social program. It's also the direct result of a premier that has refused to stand up for Saskatchewan and demonstrate real leadership on this important file. My question to the premier, Mr. Speaker, why has he refused to stand up to the federal conservatives on the health Court. Here, here. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, absolutely, we need a federal partner in health care, and we need the federal government, to, and they should absolutely renew the Canada Health Accord. But we also need a provincial government, Mr. Speaker, that is focused on fixing the basics here, and here. not focused on pouring untold millions into its flagship lean project. A project, Mr. Speaker, that frontline health care workers are saying is getting in the way of patient safety and is getting in the way of quality of care for patients. My question to the Premier, when will he listen to frontline health care workers? When will he stop wasting taxpayers' dollars on the FAT contract? When will he start fixing the basics in health care and seniors' care? Here, here. There's a new report from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change today, and it's a very concerning one. The head of the IPCC says that the findings in the report should, quote, jolt people into action, end quote. Unfortunately, when it comes to this government, we don't see action on climate change. We see continual cuts. This government has cut climate change funding by 82% since 2009. To the Environment Minister, how can he possibly justify that? This government is delaying the technology fund. It watered down SAS Power's conservation target. It cut environmental protection and environmental assessment. It says it's a fallacy that we can increase our reliance on renewable power. It slashed our emission targets and presided over a significant increase in emissions. That's this government's shameful track record on the environment and as a resource producing and trade dependent province it's reckless for us to have this kind of track record so to the environment minister with such a dismal record on the environment how can he possibly justify the further cuts that we see in this year's budget last week we heard two different stories from this government about a second bridge in Prince Albert the minister of highways said this government is adamant that PA does not need a second bridge and that this government will not help fund one. But then the Premier said this government would actually consider supporting a second bridge for Prince Albert, but only if it is a P3 bridge. So to the Premier, which is it? Does this government think Prince Albert needs a second bridge or not? No wonder the people of Prince Albert and area are so frustrated with their local SAS party MLAs because they are so ineffective and they refuse to stand up for what matters to the people in Prince Albert and area. The people of Prince Albert and area and the people of northern Saskatchewan deserve so much better from this government. And that's why today we are standing up for them and we are asking the question. We keep hearing major concerns about how this government is neglecting the basics. Neglecting the basics in health care and in seniors care. And while it's neglecting the basics, Mr. Speaker, it's choosing to pour in untold millions into a U.S. consultant, into Japanese senseis, into Kaizen promotion offices, yes. all in support of its Lean Pet project. We've heard many concerns, Mr. Speaker from patients, from families, from frontline health care workers. And now we're also hearing major concerns from government appointees on health region boards. Lawrence Chomos, the chair of the Sunrise Health Region, says this government's budget, quote, puts a lot of strain on the system, end quote. To the Premier, why is he adding a lot of strain to health care instead of fixing the basics? Yeah. These are some of the concerns that they identify. Patients being put at risk, Mr. Speaker. Patients being, har tr being harmed. Discharges being rushed. Hospitals running out of vital supplies. And an increase in the number of infections because of cutbacks to cleaning. This government has lost its way, signed a fat contract on lean. Will the Premier stand today, admit that they've lost their way, cancel the fat cash cow contract? Here it is. We see the same thing here from this Minister that we saw from the Premier. More spin instead of addressing the reality before him. That's the government that's cut educational assistance, the government that's growing the, the class size, Mr. Speaker, the government that has putting millions for standardized testing, but no dollars for portables or getting the basics right in classrooms.
And you'd think, you know, that minister gets up and pats himself on the back. This is the minister who rejected the 10 portables that are needed here in Regina. And the Catholic school division here in Regina says, quote, we're going to be pressed to get our kids into the classrooms, end quote. Overcrowding is going to get worse because of that government's neglect for making sure that school divisions have the space they need. My question to the minister, why is this government refusing to fix the basics, to listen to teachers and the front line and school boards, like, and ensure they get things right, like having enough portables for students to learn all across Saskatchewan? Yeah. This government rejected $540,000 in requests for training from frontline care facilities. This included training for care aides in the gentle persuasive approach, which is recognized as a best practice for caring for those with dementia. It also included training for the Eden alternative, which is also a best practice for seniors care. Care facilities said they desperately needed this training in order to improve the quality of care for their residents. But this government said no to $540,000 for that important training. So this government, Mr. Speaker, said no to fixing the basics and improving the quality of care for residents, but it said yes to untold millions of dollars for the Premier's Lean Pet Project. It said no to staff training, Mr. Speaker, that would have standardized and improved the quality of care for residents, Mr. Speaker, but it said yes to mandatory Kaizen basic training sessions, Mr. Speaker, where frontline healthcare workers learn Japanese words and learn how to properly fold paper airplanes. My question to the Premier, Mr. Speaker, how on earth can he justify this? Why is this government continually wasting dollars and failing to fix the basics that are affecting seniors care and health care here in Saskatchewan to the premier. This is a debate about priorities and this government is choosing a 40 million dollar contract with an American consultant over providing the bare basics Mr. Speaker in seniors care call buttons uh, frontline staff this government is prioritizing $40 million contract with an American consultant and $3,500 a day senseis over seniors care. A question from uh, Donna, uh, a nurse uh, in Saskatchewan here, stating, quote, Many of us had serious doubts from the outset, especially when lean classes involved having us make paper airplanes more efficiently. Not a single word revolved around safe, effective, professional care of patients. Can we put a halt to this massive, costly, government-driven directive? What we don't want to see is a $40 million consultancy from the United States coming into Saskatchewan, paying Sensei's $3,500 a day to be here to teach these intelligent, hardworking people how to make paper airplanes. That doesn't make any sense at all, particularly when this Premier continues to tout the fact that there's savings, but he cannot give any actual evidence of savings. We keep hearing more and more details about how that government is uh, failing to get the job done in the education system and how they're ignoring educational leaders in this province, school boards and teachers, Mr. Speaker. We've heard about how the Saskatoon Public School Division needed 11 portable classrooms, but all that government gave them was Two, we've heard that the Greater uh, Saskatoon Catholic School Board uh, School Division needs 12 portable classrooms, and all that government gave them is four. Now we've learned that the government can't even get the job done when it comes to building the schools and renovating the schools that we need. This uh, government will actually leave a much-needed renovation that's going to cost a lot more to deal with in the future in Saskatoon's largest Catholic high school, not complete. To the minister, how is this acceptable? <laughs> This government's approach to landfill management is far from adequate. The provincial auditor said this government needs to do much more to protect ground and surface water from contamination by landfills. And the government's own water security agency acknowledged in their state of the watershed report that 18 of the province's 29 watersheds are under moderate to high intensity stress from landfills. Let me repeat that. 62% of Saskatchewan's watersheds are under moderate to high intensity stress as a result of landfills. To the Minister, why is this government leaving people open to the risk of drinking contaminated water by not properly regulating and monitoring Saskatchewan's landfills? Speaker, the Minister of Social Services and one government official, the Cabinet Secretary, charged $3,634.33 for limousine services while she was in London, England for just four days. That's eight months of social assistance and shelter allowance for a single adult. To the minister, why didn't she just take a black cab or the underground subway? Why did she rack up over $3,600 in limo fees? <laughs> Speaker, the Minister of Social Services and the Cabinet Secretary spent almost $19,000 in total to visit London and Ghana. 
The Ministry of Social Services has no notes about the Minister's trip to Ghana, and neither does Executive Council. But taxpayers paid $19,000 for her trip, including over $3,600 for a limo in London. To the Minister, how can she justify this kind of spending when she's making cuts for her own department, including the Child and Family Services yeah. Division? Yeah. Yesterday, the Minister of Social Services said she stayed with a friend while in Ghana. To the Minister, why does her expense claim show $326.08 for accommodations if she was staying with a friend? And will she pay that back to taxpayers? Yeah. Speaker, yesterday, the Minister of Social Services also said she didn't go out for any meals while in Ghana. To the Minister, why did she bill taxpayers $389.54 for meals when she says she didn't go out for any meals while she was in Ghana? The Minister said she had five or six meetings during the four-day layover she had in London. Despite having just 1.5 meetings per day, she billed the taxpayers to have a limo service at her beck and call to the minister, did she use that limo service for any sightseeing or shopping with her friend? Is that why she finally agreed to pay back that part of this very expensive trip? Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, we did not get an answer to the question. Did she use the limo service for any sightseeing or shopping with her friend? Is that why she finally agreed to pay back that part of the very expensive trip? Yeah. But we know that taxpayers did cover a $200 lunch with a friend. And now we know that the minister admits that the $3,600 lim limo service was also inappropriate. To the minister, how can we trust that taxpayers didn't cover any other personal expenses on this trip? <laughs> Why are there no reports from any of her meetings in London or Ghana? <laughs> this sounds more and more like it was mostly a personal trip to visit friends in Ghana and spend some time in London. Will the minister repay the full expenses to taxpayers today? While in London, Mr. Speaker, over $200 was billed to taxpayers for a lunch the Minister of Social Services had in London with her friend from Saskatchewan. The government claims, Mr. Speaker, their claim is, is that that was a mistake. My question is for the Premier. Who designated this lunch as an official debrief meeting and who signed off on that expense claim? No answer on who signed off. My question, if it's not the minister, who is it that deemed this trip to be an official debrief, official government work, and then who signed off on that expense? Uh, yesterday, Mr. Speaker, the Minister of Social Services said that she billed over $3,600 for a limo service because, quote, I did what everybody was doing, end quote. My question is for the Premier. Who else in government is billing over $3,600 for limo service? Hey.